Welcome to episode 117 of The Prophetic Life. Today, guys, we're going to have Crystal Lowry is going to be with us today. And I'm going to be interviewed, I'm going to be introducing her. And we're going to be talking about book writing. We're going to be talking about journaling. We're going to be talking about partnering with God and how we write things down. You know, write the vision and make it plain so that he that reads it can run with it. Hello, Rebecca Porter, my Kentucky girl. I bless you. Call you blessed, Ladybug, in Jesus' name. Welcome, 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 guys, to the prophetic life. Sarah the Savage is on. Sarah the Savage. I bless you, Sarah. Matt Bross is on. Man, here comes the tribe. Here they all come, man. These, these star players that are always in, I'm so grateful that you guys are here. Monica Fari is on. Hello, beautiful tribe. Hello, Paul Phillips, right on. Uh, some very, uh, I'm, I'm getting so familiar now with all of your names, and I am so grateful for that. I'm grateful for the people that are joining us. You guys let me know where you're from if I don't know where you're from. Uh, Rebecca Porter says that um, Prophetic Wednesday was so cool today. Really? Well, I, I'm glad it was. Um, my team put all that together for me. And I looked up stuff for about five minutes. All my team gave me a whole bunch of notes and said, what are this? What out of this do you want to preach? And I looked at it literally for five minutes. I went, okay, let's go do it. Boom. And off we went. So it was, I, I say that uh, to say it was the Lord and uh, it was team and it was people that put stuff together and just said, I just said, I want to know what's going on in the heavens. And uh, we looked it up and I, to, I, honestly, I have been so busy. I haven't been tracking with the heavens, like what I typically do. Uh, typically I'm so into it, but guys, I'm living a new life and I am, <laughs> I want to just tell you everybody, all my team that is hanging out with me, I'm just wearing them out. We just go from one thing to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. And I do not feel sorry for them one bit. I'm looking at them right now. I'm looking at two of uh, two of my main players. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, man, I was just, I, I I'm living a different life right now and none of us have it figured out, including me. I don't have it figured out yet. We're working hard on trying to figure it out. Um, but I, so I haven't been looking at the heavens, like I, what I typically do. It's one of the most life-giving things to me, but I have not been able to. And I had even forgot that there was a meteor shower that was happening and, uh, like, oh my gosh, the Edda meteor shower. Oh my gosh. Like what, how could I have missed that? And it's coming out of Aquarius. And of course, uh, we have the time of Aquarius is actually coming up, meaning Pentecost right on. She said, I so love the center of the galaxy showing the cross. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Monica Fari. That is pretty dadgum cool. Now it's, it's a, it's a big deal, guys. The spirit of the Lord is moving. Hello, Allison. I'm so glad that you're here. I bless you. And you know that I love you up in big time Quebec right on. And, uh, Sarah, Sarah Savage says, hello, Mildred Hooper. Can you guys say hello? Hello, hello, hello. She's saying hello to you. Uh, Cindy says that she's playing catch up and that she's been listening to Troy for about three hours a day and you're almost caught up. Man, how much hillbilly accent can you possibly take? My goodness, what a trooper you are. Well, welcome guys and being caught up. Well, my friends, I want to get off into this and I'm about to introduce my friend and she wrote a book and we're going to talk about her book. She has actually been on with us before. And she is such a sweet person and how she carries the presence of the Lord is so sweet. Uh, she is a gentle spirit with a, a mean determination within her. It was a very interesting thing. After, after I met her the last time, I thought, boy, she's an interesting girl. Very, very, very gentle. Very, very, very sweet. But I promise you, she's hard headed. I can tell you that right now. She's hard headed. And when, when she's determined, no, I'm not going to live like that. I'm not going to live like that. Or yes, this is the way I'm going to live or no, this is truth to me or no, this is right. This is awesome. That's not awesome. And she just carries it with her. I'm like, Oh wow. And I saw it. I, I always, when I meet people, I pay attention to how they carry the presence of the Lord. That is a big deal to me. Um, talents, yeah, man, we got to have talented people around us. Uh, talents are a really big deal, but what's real is there's 7 billion people on the planet and you can find talents. What you need is people who carry the presence of the Lord that can walk the walk that you're walking. And I so I've learned to pay attention to that. I really have. And I've actually I've made a huge transition about five years ago. And, and, and yes, I'm still impressed with talent, but it quit being so impressed with talent. And I like actually being surprised by talent. Like uh, Giles and Mildred are in here. Like, you know what? I like how they carry the presence of the Lord. And then first time I saw Giles photography, I was like, oh, okay. I'm blown away at that. That's what I like. I like being really surprised by talent 
and being blown away with how people carry the presence of the Lord. I think that Krista was a whole lot like that. Um, she is indeed very talented, but how she carries the presence of the Lord is really cool. And today we're going to share her unique walk and how you and I can walk that kind of walk. Guys, this is Miss Crystal Lowry. Hello, Crystal. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How was that for a really cool introduction? That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's hey, really listen, cool. you owe me. You you owe me an awesome introduction now. That's how that yes. works. Yes. Well, I've known <laughs> Troy Brewer now for many years, and he's amazing. Anyway. Well, actually, I have been watching for a long time, and I've read your books, and I've been watching, in fact, what we'll talk about today. And we, we talked about this just before you went on, but I quoted you. I only quote the best, you know. Oh, yes. So I'll quote you. you in this, this book. And <laughs> That's <laughs> great. That is outstanding. Well, yeah, man, we're going to get off into that. I I, I think uh, before, before we actually talk about your book, if we could just talk about, first of all, the thing I just, hey, how did I size you up? Whenever I just gave that introduction, does that, is that you? I do appreciate that. I really do. Um, you know, and we're all growing and we're going deeper into the Lord. Um, but that is something that I, I strive to do, um, you know, with the Lord's grace on my life, um, is to really just live with his presence. You know, yep. and if I can't do that, what am I doing? You know? So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a powerful woman of God, and uh, we were all very impressed with you whenever we met you. You know, I was I was actually surprised when uh, you told me that your husband had died, and it really hasn't been that long since your husband has died. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you don't carry that widow thing on you. And you said, no, I even reject that word. I'm not a widow. And I was like, ah, I yes. got you. I, yes. like, I love that. I refuse to be defined. Yeah. by the sorrows of life or by yeah. any of those things, you know, I'm not going to yeah. be defined by that. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. We choose, you know, um, we choose life or death and mm. I choose life. So, so and that, that's in the words I choose as well, because words are life or death. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Let's talk about, so now that you're an author and you've learned a lot about being an author and you're still learning, this is your second book, correct? Yes. And what is your book called? This book is called Abraham Sandals of Faith, and there's a sub subtitle there: Faith, Prophetic Faith Keys to Life and Destiny. Okay, so so why did you write this book, and what is it that you want people to get out of this book? What is the takeaway that you want them to get? Okay, well, I wrote this book. First of all, faith is kind of that's the thing that I it inspires me. I get excited by it. Um, even when I was younger, a teenager, I remember Hebrews 11 was my favorite chapter. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel it. like you know, Hebrews 11, one is kind of like my life verse. Um, and so um, I, I wrote this really, um, I was looking back in my notes in my journal, actually. And January 1st of 2019, you know, every new year, it's like, OK, God, what do you have for me this year? What are the new you know, the new things for this year. And I wrote down, I heard, write a, a book about Abraham's faith walk, his mm. journey, but I didn't really know how to organize it. You know, there's so much there and so many different ways. And so I didn't start writing yet. And then a whole year, almost a year and five months went by. And then we got into last year and I literally had not thought about it very much, honestly, because it had been so long. Um, I didn't forget, but I, you know, I hadn't really been thinking about it. And I was washing dishes one evening and I was literally at the sink washing dishes <clears throat> and I got the download for the chapters. <laughs> You're such a girl. So I, I turned it off. You're such a girl, Crystal. You're I such did. a girl. Listen, I I, for me, girl. for me, I was in a deer stand. And, <laughs> and <laughs> no, that's amazing. You know, yeah. that, that's actually prophetic that you're in the place yeah. where you're washing dishes. If that was yeah. a dream, you know, that would be symbolic of, mm -hmm. okay, I was at the place where you wash the things for the setting of the table. I was there in that place. And then the Lord spoke to me and gave me a download, but it wasn't a dream. Yeah. It was, it was real time for you. 
Yeah. And so I turned the water off. I got my phone because I was trying to grab a piece of paper and I thought, where can I write this down before I forget? And so I got my phone. I started typing the notes in chapter one, this topic, chapter two, this topic. And I had all the chapters in the very next day I started That's writing. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. So what is your, so what is it that you want people to take away from this book? After they read your book, what are you hoping that they will get and that they will walk in that they didn't before they read your book? Well, I feel like, you know, it, who would have known when I started writing really what the extent of 2020 would, would show, you know, in terms of the need for faith and the, the cry for faith. Right. Um, but I think, so when we think of faith, we think about Abraham, he's the father of our faith. Mm. And I think so many times we think about these Bible characters as just characters like superheroes in a book. Um, and they have these special qualities, but he was a person, you know, and he didn't even start out it's good, Crystal. as a great, you know, faith um, hero. He started out in a horrible place where there was sin and his whole family was steeped in like idol making and idol worship. And so God called him out. And so, I mean, his life, like think about yourself today. You know, what are you facing in terms of faith or walking towards your destiny or, or, or that thing? And you think, OK, how can I get to that point? This this vision that God has given me. OK, well, I can, you know, my qualifications or I can sort the, the lights from the darks and do my laundry. You know, I can. OK, I can put that on my list of qualifications. I can make some good short ribs. You know, I can do this. But how is this going to get me to my destiny? I'm just a person, you know, and I think when we look at Abraham, really, God gave him this amazing vision. How is he going to get there? And walking with him in his sandals of faith is it's it's telling because we get to go on that journey with him. He didn't just start out being called the father of faith. He is called the father of faith after his walk with the Lord. Right. And so I think that's what I, you know, pulling out from this book and what, you know, what I think you will glean from it is that he's a real person and he did have shortcomings, but he kept walking with the Lord. And there's some major keys in his life that we can all um, incorporate into our faith journey. Okay. So <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's talk about your favorite chapter of the Senate. And let's talk about it real quick because I'm very interested in, well, in your favorite chapter. So it's like the, you know, when somebody says, what's your favorite scripture in the Bible? It's like, they're all yeah, yeah. my favorite, but <laughs> yeah. um, so chapter seven, um, this one is called looking up stars as a visionary picture. And so this is, this is one chapter where I actually quoted from your book, looking up. Right? <laughs> so I'm so going to sue you. Yeah. I'm just tell you, yeah, I'm so going to sue you, Crystal. I oh, already, my goodness. Well, I documented it. You're, oh, you're okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know, the verse that you started off with, Habakkuk 2 2, yeah. um, write the vision and make it plain. So there's some keys there. We have to write the vision. So in mentoring, yes, you know, we, we have to write it down. We can't just hear it and then you know, that's it. We write it down. And, and it also says and engrave it plainly. So can it be easily understood when we write it down? And then the one who reads it, whoever that is. So if I'm reading it or if my family reads it or my ministry um, staff reads it or whoever, they can run with it, you know. And so in business, Know, people do this. Businesses have a business plan. They have, they start off writing their mission and their vision and their core values and things like that to reach those business goals. But in life, you know, we, we say, well, how can I have more faith? How can I do this? Well, there's some practical things like this. And it's not just from a secular um, mindset. God created these practical strategies. And so in this chapter, we talk about the importance of keeping the vision before you and specifically a vision board. And so um, in Abraham's walk in, you know, God telling him, okay, you're going to have descendants, you know, you're going to have descendants and here he is 75 years old and doesn't have a child at all. You know, I mean, come on. 
Come on. So how is he going to do this? So, so really God gave him the vision, um, but then he gave him the vision to look at. So he helped him out here and we can, we can learn from this. So God gave him the vision of the stars in the sky. And so oh, it, it's interesting because, you know, when it's dark outside, you know, when you have your low points in faith, when your faith starts to dip a little bit, that's when Abraham's first vision board came into play. So when it was dark outside, he could the look vision up. board. That is so good. Yes. It showed him the sky as a vision mm -hmm. board. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm so going to yeah. steal that from you. I'm going to, I am okay. going to steal that from you and I'm going to preach that all over the world. That is okay. genius. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. So, you know, and so, and it was, he kept it before his eyes. So it wasn't yes. just like he saw it once and then yeah. he looked at it three months later and then That's he looked right. at it seven months later. Every night he could look up and it was repeated every day. He could yes. look up and see that vision yes. of the stars in the sky. And then God gave him another vision board, the sand, you know, the sand that yeah. he would walk on, you know, yeah. and earlier in his journey he said, look to the north and to the south and to the yes. east and to the west. I mean, sand everywhere. Yes. So whether he's Good. looking up or looking down, here's your vision. I don't care yeah. where you look, but you've got vision everywhere, Abraham. And so I think, um, you know, we can really... Uh, we really need to incorporate that into our faith walk and not just say it's some super spiritual thing, but God gave practical strategies okay. to, to get to the vision, you know, Crystal, Crystal, your word's a good word. And <laughs> that's good. Every single bit of that is good. Mm -hmm. Now look, we're 17 minutes into this. We're actually 18 minutes into it now. And we've got 12 minutes left uh, in this first session. Okay. And I want, and I want to be able to get time to, because I'm super proud of you mm -hmm. for writing the book and getting all the way through it. Most people cannot do that. And it's something I really want to mentor people in. Number one, I want to, I want to tell everybody to get this book. Okay. If you're part of the prophetic life, Crystal is a part of the prophetic life, right mm -hmm. on. You yes. are right. You are. Yes. I was thinking mm -hmm. you was. And mm -hmm. so how do, number one, how do we get your book? How do we do that? Okay. Well, so it's on pre-order right now. So you can okay. go to our website based on faith.org and there's based a link called faith. shop okay. and it's, it's should be the first one up there and it says pre-order. So you can go ahead and do that. Um, we're not too far out from publication. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Based on faith dot org based yes. on faith dot org okay yes. awesome. okay um, now now yeah. you did i want to just tell you i had a i had a big <clears throat> i want to just kind of spend the next few minutes talking with you through your journey and actually writing this book now again this was not your first rodeo but it's only your second and sometimes the second one uh it can be just as treacherous or even more treacherous than the first one like i just had my first big book deal mm -hmm. uh with destiny image this mm -hmm. last year and I, i've been writing books for 25 years wow and I've never had a book deal before. Mm -hmm. And that's been kind of a, I, I actually had a really good friend that went to work for Destiny Image. And so he has been so good to me and walked me through the whole process. But if I had not had him, I there was some big pitfalls that I could have fallen into. And he kept me from that. He was a man of God and he helped me. But I can tell you that the first book that I ever published mm -hmm. uh, was a book that was called uh, Miracles with a Message. And it was kind of an autobiography. It, 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 what's real is nearly 1,000% of all writers, their, fir their first book is something like an autobiography. It's something about their own personal something that's going on. And that is so common. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was that way with me. I, it was that way with you. Right. Yes. And it was also that way with me. And I didn't know that whenever I first did no. that. But that's a, that's that a works. normal thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my whole first book was on how uh, there was on miracles that I had personally seen and the takeaway that I had from it mm -hmm. was miracles with a message. What was what did I learn about Jesus through that? Okay, well, I compiled all those things together. I got them together and then I started looking for a book for for a book company. I I found uh, Aventine Press mm -hmm. in Colorado. I'm sorry, in California, mm -hmm. Aventine Press. It, it might be Aventine Press, but uh, I call it Aventine. So, so uh, they're based out of California, and I talked to them, and I just flat out told the guy, "Look, mm -hmm. I want to get this thing published, but 
I know this is crazy, but someday I might get a legitimate book deal. And if you have the rights to all this, man, that's going to be like really bad. He said, no, no, none mm -hmm. of that. There ain't none of that going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's, I got an IS, he gave me an ISBN number. He, he let me keep all the rights mm -hmm. and uh, he published a good quality uh, product. Another thing too, that was very important to me was that there was no minimum order. Okay. And those are things that you need to ask friends mm -hmm. when you're signing up with a book company, even a self cup publishing, some mm -hmm. of them have a 500 book minimum order. Well, mm -hmm. dude, uh, you know, if that's $5 a piece for you to buy, that's a lot of money mm -hmm. and, and you that might not have that money mm -hmm. or some of them have more than that. So, but there was no minimum order. And here's what's real is I did. There's two things is blowing my mind about that first book because, because the second book I published was numbers that preach. That was the second one. And I, I got it done. I actually did the miracles of the message before I did numbers that preach because I already had numbers that preach. It was already written, but I wanted to see what the process was like on another book because I knew that numbers that preach was going to be a big mambo jamba for me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to mess it up. And I'm so glad because um, I just got a book deal for numbers that preach. Mm -hmm. Now that's a book I wrote 22 years ago. <laughs> and it's just, it's it's become a 22 year overnight success, right? <laughs> and 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 now I've got a big book publishing company that's like, yeah, I want to we want to rebrand it. We want you to add some new uh stuff to it, blah mm -hmm. blah blah, and we want to launch it to the world. And I'm like, okay, if I had if Aventine had my rights, I wouldn't be able to do that now. Right. And so that's a big deal that, that yes. I'm glad that the Lord led me through. And then the second thing is today, uh, I got a check from Aventine Press for 6000 bucks today. Wow. And you need to understand, mm -hmm. none of those books are books that I sell anymore. Mm -hmm. None of those books. I haven't sold a book from Aventine Press in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So those are like... The original versions of the first ones, it's just people finding me on the internet because I'm in, I'm in so much media. To, but I promise you, the first 20 years, I didn't make $6,000 from them. And now I'm still, I'm, it, anyway, it's just crazy. And that actually happened today. So I, I praise God for that. That's tell cool. me tell me about your book writing journey. Tell me, tell me what that looked like for you. Well, some of the same, same things that you said in terms of how that agreement was structured with the publisher. Um, and one of the other um, things that, so everything that you said, and then I was thinking, um, you know, some publishers want a like a five year commitment. You know, uh -huh. anything that you publish in that five year period, they will be your publisher. So, you, you know, things like that. Some of the other practical things was more of like, you know, so the, the manuscript is written and then there's all this work to do afterwards. In yeah, the a lot of work. Process. I mean, it's like an, another entire process. Yes. Um, and then, you know, for example, um, some of the people who we'd asked for endorsements, they said they would write it, but then it was like four months later and, you know, <laughs> we still didn't have it, you know, so it's like waiting on things like that. And, um, you know, um, designing the book cover, you know, because you're working with an artist that the publisher, well, at least I did, I, you know, mm -hmm. they have an artist and, you know, trying and to, you might not like their artists. You know, yeah. you might not like their artists and uh, that's, that is, you're so, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's an important part of when you pick a, when you pick a book publisher, you need to look at all of their covers mm -hmm. and make sure that you like their covers and also make sure that they're not just using generic covers. Like mm -hmm. I did a show, I don't remember who it was, Mildred, but it was some chick in Seattle. I don't know if you remember her. And she said, what's, what's bad is she came out with this book and it's the same exact cover of a Chuck Pierce book or somebody yeah. like that. And it's the same exact yeah. cover. And she didn't know that. And she's like, I have fought them and fought them on this. Cause you have to change this cover mm -hmm. because, and they won't, you mm -hmm. know, and that's a big mess. Like, golly, I'm yeah. so sorry for that. Yeah. So those, you need to look, and that's mm -hmm. another big part of it. You also need to look at the inside of like a lot of uh, self-publishing companies that you, you give them a manuscript and then they, there's a whole nother process you got to go through and, there's mm -hmm. a million things you got to fill out and you, you feel a lot of stress when you're first doing that. Mm -hmm. I've done it. You know, I've, I've written, written 14 or 16 books. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember, but I, I'm not much of a numbers guy, so it doesn't matter. 
but there's, <laughs> there's there I've, I've written a lot of books I've, I've written over a dozen books and i don't get stressed over any over any of that anymore i know it's part of the process and mm -hmm. i got somebody named kip that works for me and i throw it at her and i tell her go throw this to tommy and go do that so i actually have a team of people mm -hmm. but if you don't have that team that is a tremendous yeah. part of the process of getting that and a lot of people fall out during that part yeah it's time consuming and so one of the things that just in a practical way is um, I've like scheduled reminders on the calendar because you're doing all sorts of things. Okay. Follow up with this person. Okay. To keep myself on track. Okay. Make sure this is done by this day to make their, you know, and I even did that when I was writing. So every week when I was writing, I would schedule time and block it on the calendar to actually write so that I could, you know, it's an entire book. You can't just write half a chapter and, that's it. You know, you have no book. <laughs> so get to actually endure to the end. You know what? Uh, somebody asked me like, here's, here's, here's a book publishing question. And here's what I need to do. I need to actually have Sean Tabot, who is mm -hmm. the guy from destiny image that I work with because we could have a huge conversation. I need to do a show on this, but I want to just tell you like one thing I just now found out about that's really weird. Like we come out with our own audio version of things. I just got on um I just got on Amazon and looked and there is already an audio version of uh my newest book Redeeming Your Timeline and I was like what and I clicked on it and I started listening to it and I think it's a robot. Wow. So, I was like, <laughs> so what I think Destiny Image did was I think that they took that file and turned that over to some company and the company turned it into a computer mm -hmm. and did it and maybe that's how everybody does things. That ain't how I do things. Yeah. But now I'm wondering, because right now we're working on our audio version of every book that we have, which I do have an audio version of, of a lot of my books, but I don't have re of Redeem Your Timeline, but I honestly might not be able to. I might be under contract mm -hmm. with these guys and I might not be able to. Now that's not a game changer for me. I don't, I don't care. I, I but, but uh, still, uh, that's an interesting thing that I would have never, I was like, what? I was like, look, and I clicked on it. It's like, listen, and my, actually my sound guys that are in charge of my audio book said, have you heard this? And I went, who the heck is that? Redeeming your timeline oh my by Troy Brewer. Redeeming your timeline. I'm like, that is a freaking robot. That's what that is. So I was like, wow. So, but I mean, I don't know. I may, maybe that's what you do now. I have no idea what people do. I know what I do and I'm old and mm -hmm. I don't do things how young people do things anymore. So I don't know. Anyway, that's all good stuff. Uh, somebody writes in and I don't know who this is, just says Facebook user, but it says the e-course is amazing. And I want to just say that to you, uh, Crystal, you should also think about doing an e-course uh, on your stuff. And like, I know how to help you do that. Awesome. I do. And, well, and that's, that's probably something we ought to do is we ought to actually do a mentoring thing on how do you mentor somebody in doing an e-course and on doing that. Uh, I can just tell you ladybug and without you getting any kind of bad vibe from me that you are a beautiful lady and your voice is beautiful. You carry the presence of the Lord with you. Uh, you, you know, your stuff, you enjoy speaking. You have no problem with talking. You have no problem with that. And uh, you should also do an e-course. You should do Thank that. You. And Thank I would you. encourage you. To do I, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, guys, I think, uh, Crystal, I think it's about time for me to let you go. It's 1.30 and I have another thing to do at 2 and then another thing at 3 and another thing at 4 and another thing at 5. And then I'm preaching tonight at Open Door Church. So I want you to pray for me and my schedule today. We do that? I will. Okay. All right. right on. So, Crystal, one more time. What? Uh, tell us again the name of your book. Okay, it's called Abraham's Sandals of Faith. Why did you name it that? Tell me that real quick. Um, well, actually, so, you know, the whole time I was writing, I didn't know what the name of the book was going to be. And yes. then it came to me. Actually, it just came to me. I didn't run, really like have a list that I chose from. I just sort of one day it was like, oh, that's the name of the book. <laughs> so it was like a download. Yeah. That's so good, man. It's yeah. so good. But it is his well, faith journey. Yeah. So hey, who is who is your book publishing company, by the way? Um, who did you use? His name is Eddie Smith. He's in Houston. Um, a guy named Eddie yeah. Smith, and he's in Houston. And he's been around for a while. Um, 
he was referred to me by somebody. Actually, um, I did send in my first book to Destiny and I mm -hmm. never heard back, you know, so there's some rejection, you know, but you, oh, it's good. like, so you got to keep going, you know, you got to keep going on if you want to publish. Then you do. Hey, listen, I want to <laughs> tell you, uh, I'll just encourage you in that before, before Destiny took me, uh, I sent in redeeming your timeline to a big book company. And I want to tell you, I like to think I'm really thick skinned. I like to think I am and I'm really not. And mm -hmm. This lady, th these people read it and um, what they sent me back was not, it's better that they don't contact you if they don't like your book than mm -hmm. it is that they do contact you and tell you you're an idiot. That is a whole lot better uh, mm -hmm. because they contacted me back and sent me back a, out of 24 years of reading manuscripts, I've never seen a, a book that I'm trying to think exactly how she, she talked about redeeming your timeline. And she said, I've never seen a book that was written thinking that physicists were going to read it on a third grade level. <laughs> that's the way I'm, I'm reading. Like, well, you don't know me. You don't know me. Cause that's how I do everything. Ha. Yeah. And I mean, just like, and I mean, it was hardcore it was number one she wasn't she wasn't charismatic she wasn't mm -hmm. prophetic she wasn't into the gifts of the holy spirit she had no grid for that even though it was a christian book company she had no grid for physics mm -hmm. and she had no grid for my writing style mm -hmm. so there she's like look wow. this is every i mean she went way out of her way she, mm -hmm. and she did just send me back the manuscript she chopped it up to pieces and wrote notes on everything that she thought was either laughable or stupid, or she's like, you've repeated this. Well, I meant to repeat it. It's a hard concept to get. And I, and I, and I want to tell you, I got through the entire thing and oh my God, I was, I was devastated. I'm talking about, cause I worked so hard on that book. I was devastated. And then Kip, mm -hmm. who is one of my editors told me, Troy, she just doesn't have a grid for what you're doing. You need to resend it to someone else. I told Kip, no, I ain't sending nobody else. I'm done. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm done. And Kip said, no, you got to. And then I talked to Sean Tabbitt and Sean Tabbitt moved to destiny. She said, and he said, well, send it to me. Let me see. And he read it and he's like, I love this book. Yeah. And I was shocked. I was shocked. I was really shocked. Uh, it hurt so bad. What that one book company did. And I mean that I was shocked anybody would like that book. Mm -hmm. And now it's a, it's a bestseller, you know, mm -hmm. now it's mm -hmm. New York times bestseller list. Now it's, you know, uh, you know, sold hundred thousand copies, hundreds of thousands of copies just since January. So it's just the Lord. I, I, it's just Jesus. So I would just say, press through, man, press through way to go. I'm so proud of you for doing that. I'm so proud of you. So there wow. it is. There's your pre-orders right there. Sandals of faith, prophetic faith, Keys to Life and Destiny. You can get your pre-order and you can do that through basedonfaith.org. That's outstanding. Hey, listen, you are a joy to be with and I'm thank so you. grateful for you. Thank you so much and thank you again for, for pressing through and for getting this book and for the contribution that it's going to make to the body of King Jesus. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. And thank you for writing the foreword. I appreciate <laughs> that. That's awesome. You're welcome. Yeah, you're so welcome. Hey, listen, that's, that's bound to be worth some money. I'm just telling you, I'm it something else. It was so good. Lord I'm telling you, we were all like, well, oh, this is such a good forward. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, you know, honestly, uh, I forgot that your book was the book that had that chapter on looking up mm -hmm. in it. I totally forgot that that was your book. And I, and I will tell you this, too. This is something else, too. At the place that I am right now, um, a lot of people are sending me their, their books, asking me to write forward to them. And if I like the book, I'll do it. Why would I not do that? Now, I don't know that I'll be doing that a couple of years from now because I might have 10 million of those things, mm -hmm. or I might be under a contract that will not allow me to do that, which is something right. else as well, but I'm not under contract not to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you guys got some book out there and if it's not crummy, I will actually endorse it. And I want to tell you, Crystal's book is good. It's a good book. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. All right, Crystal. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye.
Well, guys, that's Crystal Lowry. And isn't she a sweet thing? And don't you just love how she carries the presence of the Lord? And don't you love that she's trying to share her journey of faith with us and also to her journey of actually accomplishing the task of writing a book and getting it all the way done? Uh, lots of people love the idea of writing a book. I can't tell you everywhere I go, people say, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. And I'm like, here's a pen. Go write one. And I'm amazed that people say that to me everywhere I go. Man, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. I've always wanted to write a book. I'm like, well, what's stopping you? Well, what's stopping you is there's a lot of things to overcome. And I want to just tell you, man, if the Lord has put a book in you, he certainly put a message within you. I mean, he, he's made you a book. You're a living epistle. That's who you are. Um, write it. Uh, my wife writes children's books. That's what she writes. And uh, she's about to come out with her fourth kid's book. And I kind of got on to her uh, maybe three years ago. And she's like, oh, I still need to write a children's book. And I told her, so I'm tired of hearing that. Why don't you do it? What's stopping you? You, you, got, a, you got a next level guy sitting right here next to you who's going to help you. And she's like, because you ready for this? Because I don't want you to write it. I want to write it. I'm like, okay, right on. Well, then, you know, get to stepping and write your daggum book. And man, she did. And then she got her next level team with her. And it was so good. And I love her books. One of her books I specifically love because I'm in it. There's a cartoon of me in it. Have y'all seen the cartoon of me in it? It is so funny. And then we're actually coming out with a numbers that preach children's book. And there's cartoons of me in that as well. And it's really cool. I saw I saw your photography, Giles. And I saw the did you see the picture that that she made out of it? Oh, I'll show it to you today. It's hilarious. I'm like, one. And then I'm like, two. And I'm making all these silly faces and all this stuff. And, it, and it's for little kids. And then it tells what the number one is about, what the number two is about. And it's numbers for preach kids version. Yeah, like whatever it is, do it. Hey, remember also to. Um, to write stuff down, I loved her. Th I loved the whole thing about the storyboard. God showed him a storyboard. Make sure that you keep things in front of your eyes, as Miss Crystal mentioned. Brother King David said, "I have set the Lord continuously before me." Dude, I'm a big write it out guy. These guys know that I'm a big let's draw it out and let's look at it. Like I'm looking right now at something that I started doing the other day. I'm like, okay, I have to find $3 million and this is, <laughs> I have to find $3 million is through this and through that. Like what? Yeah, man, we have a lot of things to fund. I mean, a lot of crazy things. So man, we just map it all out. Okay, guys. Well, until the next time I see you, I call you the head and not the tail above and not beneath and highly favor the Lord. And, uh, I think I'll let you guys go. Bye-bye everybody. Blessing and peace on you. Bye-bye. Okay.